Welcome to another tutorial made by Klaus Gärien. Today we are gonna check out how to create a dialogue system for your game. I'm trying to make it very simple but yet scalable to be used in your Construct 3 projects. So let's get into it and see how that goes. Okay, so I'm gonna create a totally new project. Of course, you can use this system in your existing game already, but I would encourage you to uh, follow through the tutorial and uh, then co copy the events and such into your project. Okay, so let's click on to the new project. I'm gonna name the project to Dialogue System and we will put size full HD, so that's 1920 and 1080. Yeah, next. Okay, so let's create that and jump into our layout and change the size to that full HD as well. So that is basically to make sure that Everything what the player sees is within this layout and within this viewport. Okay, so next up, let's rename this layout. Rename that, let's call it game. And let's rename that event sheet to game underscore e es. Okay, uh, I'm gonna create a very simple platformer just to uh, show how the uh, dialogue system works. So let's create a tileable back, tile background. I'm gonna color it red and put it there. Rename it to ground and add a solid behavior to it that it acts like a floor. So like I said, it's gonna be a simple platformer right there. And then I'm gonna create a sprite which will act as the player. I'm gonna color that to red as well and call it layer and let's scale down that a little bit and add a behavior for that so that is platform behavior so there we have it very simple game so for the dialogue system we need uh, some kind of a triggers which triggers up uh, the, uh, the texts which appear for the player so let's create that the trigger uh, right click on an empty space and insert new object and let's find a tiled background. And I'm gonna add in there and color that. Uh, it doesn't matter, the player won't see this, but I'm gonna color it green. And call that dialogue trigger. And I'm gonna change the opacity to 25. So it's easier to see that this isn't actually existing in the project. Uh, you can later on check this uh, initial visible checkbox here. That it goes uh, invisible for the player but for this example i'm not going to do that so we see when we actually hit the triggers so for this dialog trigger i need to add a instance variable let's click on that and add new instance variable i'm gonna call this dialog text and change the type to string and i'm gonna type in a text for my game so this is um Let's say, welcome to the ep epic world. That's the first. So I'm gonna copy this dialog trigger because I want to have multiple dialogues here. So this is the second one. And I'm gonna type in here, let's say, uh, this world is very epic, yes. And there we go. And I'm gonna add in a third dialog system for my game. And uh, type in here because the level is about the end. Uh, uh, now you will uh, explore the epic world again. Cool. Okay. So there we have it. Three triggers for our game. All of them are uh, copies from each other. So only what changes between these dialogue triggers is the dialogue text. And we will use this instance variable to uh, trigger the texts which appear for the player. Uh, next up, we need a uh, layer, a uh, global layer, which uh, is used to show the actual text for the player. So for that, we are gonna create a new layout. Right-click on the uh, layout folder 
and add layout and we don't need another event sheet so add layout only and let's rename that to dialog and i'm gonna rename this layer so make sure you're in the right layout the dialog layout you can see from the top here and i'm gonna rename that layer zero to uh dialog and we need to make oh sorry uh make this when uh this layer is picked from the left side there is a global no so let's change that to yes and change the parallax from 100 percent to zero point zero this is because this is kind of an user interface uh element in our game so this layout will always follow the player uh camera for example so we need to change that size to full hd as well because the layout size right now is something different so let's change that click on the dialog uh, uh dialog layout here <laughs> And uh, let's type in for the size 1920 and 1080. And now when we pick that dialog layer again, we need to uncheck that transparent, uh, sorry, check it. This is because uh, if we don't do that and we add the layer into our game, this will overlap the player screen. So the player won't be able to see anything behind it. So we need to make the layer transparent and after that we can add in a text object so right click on an empty space add insert new object and type in text and there we find it from the general let's check the text right there and basically you can make this any size you like i'm gonna make it rather big uh, and uh, change the color to white for the text but easier to appear and for the alignment i want to check this uh, left center vertical alignment to center and the origin to center and let's place it approximately to the center right now and for the te first text i'm going to type in uh use arrow keys to move and um let's add in a behavior for that text object so using behaviors, add new behavior, and there is a ready-made uh, behavior called fade. So let's use that fade to give it a nice effect when it comes in and you know, fades out. And what else we need? We have this fade time. Uh, we can set that to let's say 0 0.5, wait time to 3, and fade out time maybe 0 0.5 as well and we need a instance no we don't actually need instance variable here uh, let's continue to the game layout and now we need to add a new layer so right click on the layer space add layer at top and let's call that dialog and what should happen is that it replaces this uh, layer with your dialog layer because we checked the global to yes so when we create a layer and rename it to the same as we have here the global layout it should replace this and overwrite we can actually see here from the global overridden so it works nicely and now we have the use arrow keys to move right here so we can actually lock that from the right side press that lock just to make sure that we don't accidentally move that arrow key to move text e anywhere uh, let's actually rename the text object we just created so click on the text and let's call that dialog text and now we can pick one of the triggers and add in a instance variable add new instance variable and let's use a number and let's call this fade out uh, sorry wait time let's call it wait time and put a three there for starters there we go and now i think we're pretty done to go into the event sheet and make the actual uh make it actual work so jump into the game es and add in a new event 
And let's choose the player and uh, search for on collision with another object. And let's pick the uh, dialogue trigger. Done. And for the actions, we want to, first of all, we want to system create, create object. And we want to choose the uh, dialogue text. And for the layer, we want to put it into the dialogue layer. So let's type in layer index, uh, open brackets, and let's type in dialogue. There go. And for the X, we want to put it at the middle. So that's 960 for the full HD. And for the Y, let's put 300. So it's a little upwards, not at the center of the screen. So for the uh, horizontal alignment, it's at the uh, center. But for the vertical alignment, it's a little up from the center point. Let's press done. And what else do we need? We need to uh, add action and choose the dialogue text and search for set text. And what we want to do for the set text is search the uh, dialogue trigger point um, dialogue text enter. So now we create a dialogue text object and change the text to the dialogue trigger dot dialogue text. So basically in the game layout, we have these dialogue triggers and all of them have dialogue text instance variable. And the text is something which we have typed. You can basically type anything you like there, but all of these triggers have different texts. So with this event, we're able to set the text for that cre object we just created to the text which is in the instance variable. So next up, we want to do add action, choose the dialog text, and search for weight. Uh, there's set wait time, which is for the wait fade effect, uh, say behavior which we added. Set wait time, and search for dialog text. Oh, sorry, dialog trigger. Dot wait time. And what else? Okay, we actually want to also add an ac action, choose the dialogue text and destroy it, but change it to the very first action which happens. So with this, we are able to uh, actually destroy the dialogue texts which might be in the scene before we show the next dialogue. So. This is to prevent overlapping if, for some reason, the player is able to trigger multiple uh, dialogue texts. So just to make sure we destroy all the dialogue texts and then we create new ones. Okay, so let's actually add another action and choose the dialogue trigger and destroy that as well because this is because uh, we don't want a player to be able to trigger the uh, dialogue text multiple times. So let's try how that works. Let's press play and see what happens. Use arrow keys to move and it fades away. And now when we touch the uh, first dialogue, it appears the text which we added. And the next one, this world is very epic, yes. And the last one, now you will explore the epic world again. And now we could basically add some kind of a trigger there to restore the layout, for example. But I think you might want to do something else. But that, those are just example texts. So what we just did here was a very simple dialogue system. We have two uh, instance variable for the dialogue triggers. So basically dialogue text, which is the text which appears for the player. And we have wait time. So if you have longer texts here, you can basically choose the wait time, anything you like. If it's a very long text, you can put something like, let's say 10 seconds or something like that. But uh, you, uh, you can basically change it depending on how much text you have. So yeah, actually that is it.
that is a very simple way to do a dialogue system for your game. So what you can do now is basically have these kind of triggers all around your game, having different kind of texts and uh, showing the player uh, the text in front of the screen. Just remember to have the dialogue uh, layer in your layout and it's a global layout and it's at the very top layer of your game because uh, it might go behind something if it, if it isn't. Okay, so keeping it very simple and short, thank you very much for watching this tutorial. Hopefully you find it useful in your uh, upcoming projects or your ongoing projects, I don't know. But anyways, thank you very much for your time and hope to see, hope to see you in our upcoming tutorials as well. Remember to subscribe for the channel. Thank you and bye-bye.